guess I'm up first. So good morning to everybody. First and foremost, thank you, Governor Murphy, for coming out. I appreciate it. Uh, Kim Corbett, thank you for being here as well. It's all the families. Scott and his uh, training department. Uh, thank you guys for being here. Really appreciate it. Um, also, like to thank Tamara Williams, who was our primary instructor for a while. Uh, she's been a huge help to us, and also to Brian Ritter. Thank you as well. Um, I'm Chris Muda. It's an honor to be here today in front of you guys and talk to you a little bit about the class and some of the uh, difficulties that we went through. As everybody knows, COVID-19 happened uh, just at the beginning of our class. So we were the first class to be done on Zoom. So that came with having to wake up and roll out of bed and put on your pajamas and log in. So that part was nice, but um, not being able to physically study with each other, not knowing anything about the railroad starting out that part made it very difficult. Um, came in one time a week to take five tests on stuff that we've never seen, never really touched before. So it's a, it's a true testament to how, how impressive all, of, all my classmates are that we're all here today. So you guys are rock stars and, and thank you guys for, for being as awesome as you guys are. Um, transit's hiring us as engineers and, and the pandemic when everybody else is laying off. That's another huge thing. Um, it shows how dedicated you know, the, the company and the state is to getting the people in New Jersey where they need to go in a time where everybody else is laying off, furloughing. So it, it really truly is a testament to, to how much they care about the state and, and getting people to where they need to go. Um, lastly, to all the families and friends that are here with us today, thank you guys. You guys are the true heroes of this class, putting up with us when we had to study, when we had to go to work, you know, late nights and you know, early mornings. Without your guys' support, we would not be here today. So thank you to each and every one of you so much because you guys allow us to do what we do. And so thank you. Again, Governor Murphy, thank you for being here. Thank you to New Jersey Transit for having us in 2001. Congratulations, you're gonna make excellent engineers. Chris, that was great uh, to you and your classmates. It's a treat to be back at yet another graduation uh, and thrilled to be with you. Good morning, everybody. Thanks to Chris Simuna for those words. Chris, thank you as well to your service to our nation as a decorated combat veteran uh, who served in Afghanistan and for your decision to continue your service with NJ Transit on behalf of your fellow New Jerseyans. And to each of you, seated in front of us. I thank you as well for answering the call to serve NJ Transit and the many New Jerseyans who depend on NJ Transit Rail each and every day. Whether they're boarding the train to get to work or to school or to visit friends and family, go to a devil's game or a show or enjoy a day trip, they rely on safe and on-time transportation. And ensuring this happens is, a, is an important undertaking, and it will soon be your jobs. You've worked hard over the past 78 weeks to get to this point, and as Chris said, under some extraordinarily unusual circumstances. So you don't just have my thanks, but you have my congratulations as well. Before I continue, I want to acknowledge everybody up here with me. First, the NJ Transit leadership team. The woman on my right, the Commissioner of the Department of Transportation and NJ Transit Board Chair, Diane gutierrez Scacchetti. Diane, great to have you. To my left, NJ Transit President and CEO, Kevin Corbett. Kevin, great to have you with us. And, amen. And from our partners in organized labor, it is a pleasure to be again joined by a dear friend, the General Chairman of Smart TD Local 60. To my right, Jerome Johnson. Jerome. So when Diane and Kevin assumed their posts shortly after I swore my oath of office nearly four years ago, NJ Transit's rail service was a shambles. And by the way, it was never because of the brave men and women who work at NJ Transit. That was never the issue. Jerome's heard me say that many, many times. But after nearly a decade of disinvestment and indifference had hollowed out this agency, gutted morale, and left customers shouldering a burden of ever-increasing fares and never-improving service. 
It was time to turn the page. NJ Transit Rail had seen so many trained engineers either retire, jump ship, or just give up that uh, a single call, a single call out could mean a domino effect of cancellations. An aging fleet kept, that kept breaking down and a maintenance supply inventory system that couldn't keep parts on hand meant more cars in the maintenance yard and fewer on the tracks and overcrowding in the ones that did remain in service. In the installation of positive train control safety technology stood at only 12% complete, despite having been mandated by Congress nine years before, and with a federally mandated installation deadline looming only a year on the horizon. No one outside of our, our team, and I do literally mean no one outside of our team, thought we would be able to even begin to turn NJ Transit around. But to quote the, the great baseball manager, Casey Stengel, they said it couldn't be done, but sometimes it doesn't work out that way. So fast forward now almost four years. Positive train control is installed, certified, and working. An entirely new fleet of locomotives and passenger cars is starting to be delivered. And with it, fewer breakdowns, better efficiency, and greater passenger comfort and we have a fully loaded and trained roster of engineers to make it all work. With your graduations today, and once you successfully complete your final check rides, which I have every confidence you will, NJ Transit's engineer ranks will rise to 404. In four years, we've brought on a total of 127 new engineers, including yourselves. After a net loss of 61 engineers between 2009 and 2018, a loss that saw NJ Transit fall into that tailspin of canceled trains and frustrated customers, in just the past four, we have overseen a net gain of 73. This means that today, when an engineer calls out for whatever reason, there's someone else to step up and into the cab to keep the line running on time. In fact, cancellations due to engineer availability have decreased 38% since we started NJ's, NJ Transit's turnaround by restocking the roster and cancellations have not exceeded single digits in seven of the past nine months. And largely because of this, not surprisingly, on-time performance since 2018 is up as well. Quite simply, more and more riders today are finding themselves at their destinations on time. And that's because riders are finding an NJ Transit with a new focus on the complete customer experience, including a responsive smartphone app that provides service updates in real time. Remarkably, we've been able to do these things and more without a single fare hike across four years. Now listen, we're not spiking any footballs here. We, we still all have a ways to go to complete NJ Transit's turnaround story. But let's make no mistake, we are well on our way. In the coming months and years, as you pull into the stations that line NJ Transit's rail system to pick up or drop off passengers, you and they will be seeing a slew of improvements being made to platforms or entirely new ones being built. And as you take your locomotives across our state, you'll be crossing new and safer bridges, perhaps most notably the new portal bridge heading to and from New York, which will soon be entirely replaced. These are all part of a multi-million dollar capital improvement program to deliver the safe and modern rail infrastructure which both current customers and our future demand. These are just a few of the many ways that NJ Transit is positioning itself for a stronger future. The boards you see in front of you here tell the full story of this turnaround. I hope if you get a couple of minutes before you leave to take a look at them. This is the NJ Transit you are joining, an agency with a clear vision for its future and a clear path to get there. You are joining the NJ Transit family at a critical time. We've come so far already and with the momentum we've built over the past almost four years, there's only one way to do things and that is to keep moving forward. Figuratively and literally, you will be the ones in the locomotives pulling NJ Transit 
and the residents it serves every day into the future. And I thank you again for answering the call to be a part of this future. I am certain that your decision to become part of the NJ Transit family will be the best professional decision you've ever made. And I think it's really cool that so many family members, including young kids, are with us today. It's a real treat to see each and every one of you. Again, my congratulations, and I look forward to seeing you in the cab. It is now my pleasure to introduce the Commissioner of the Department of Transportation and NJ Transit's Board Chair, Diane Gutierrez Schicchetti. Well, good morning. What a beautiful day for us to celebrate your completion of your training for the position of locomotive engineer. Governor ran through a number of successes that we have had at New Jersey Transit to make sure that we restore New Jersey Transit to the prominence it once had in the rail industry. You are an integral part of us being able to do that. But I want to reflect for one moment on something Chris said. You trained in a time that is unprecedented. You trained in a manner that was unprecedented. But each and every one of you had to pass the exact same tests that some of your counterparts had the benefit of classroom training, in-person coaching, the things that make being a locomotive engineer and studying may be a little easier. And I want to take a moment to commend you for probably being the class that will graduate under the most difficult circumstances. But you did it. And you should be so entirely proud of yourselves, because I can tell you, all of us are very proud of you. It's also important for us to take a moment to thank your instructors instructors who had to find a new way to teach, a new way to instill in you those very important concepts that you would need to pass the very rigorous tests that are set forth by our federal partners. Again, they were committed, and together you created the opportunity for you to have an extraordinarily beneficial professional journey. But as the governor mentioned, one of the most impressive things today is to see you here with your families. So while you made an extraordinarily beneficial professional decision, both to you and to the New Jersey Transit family, you have also made an extraordinarily important personal decision to your families. New Jersey is a state of families. The governor talks all the time about a stronger and fairer New Jersey. By taking on these roles, you put yourself in an extraordinarily strong position for success, and I have no doubt Kevin and certainly Jerome will speak to those things. But the fact that you have made this decision not only adds you to a family, but it adds you to a family of employees who stay with low turnover and strong commitment to what they do. Someone asked me yesterday what I thought infrastructure meant. Infrastructure is the underpinning of everything we do in New Jersey. The investment that we are making in New Jersey transit infrastructure with the support of the governor is truly second to none. Whether it's the new Raritan River Bridge, whether it's the Portal North Bridge, whether it's any number of station improvements, we have, we have put a, a flag in the ground that says transit is going to continue to be what helps drive New Jersey. Not just from an economic standpoint, but absolutely from a quality of life standpoint. In the summer, the New Jersey coastline becomes the, the beach train, where families take the train to enjoy a day at the beach. As New York and Pennsylvania recover Philadelphia, we're going to see our trains at greater capacity, making sure people get to work on time, or they get to go see their favorite play or favorite sports team. You do that. Your commitment to training, to passing your field testing, and then to being there every day is, is a huge responsibility. And my message to you, each and every one of you, is we have your back. And we have Jerome's back. Jerome is our, we call each other brother and sister a lot because we are. You know, we, we work hard together to ensure not only your prosperity individually as families, but our success as an agency. 
And so I am so grateful the governor lets me come to these. These, to me, are the best part of what we do with these much more personal and, 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 and opportunities to talk to you and to meet you and to understand you. You don't always get to see us, but know that your transit leadership team is here. It backs you up every day. It will be there today. It'll be there a week today. It'll be there two years from today. I wish you all the greatest success. Keep doing what you're doing. Make sure you understand all that you need to. You're, you get to meet people today you probably haven't met before. So spend a little time in fellowship and, and a little, a little you know, camaraderie amongst your class. And then all I can say is go get them. Thank you. You know, Diane, you, you mentioned someone asked you what infrastructure is. Today says a lot about when people ask me, when, when they, they ask me to pitch New Jersey, I say there are two words you need to know, talent and location. And New Jersey does well when we invest in both of those. And today embodies both talent and location, right? Because talent is all of you and training and education that goes into that. And location is investment in infrastructure. And this graduation embodies both of those words. So I echo, Diane, what you said, and thank you for your extraordinary leadership. Speaking of which, it's a treat as well to have the president and CEO of NJ Transit with us. Please help me welcome Kevin Corbett. So, so Jerome, I'd like to know why you and I, I mean, you're trying to come up to the podium and speak after the governor and Diane. I mean, that's, you know, I'm sorry, now, now you get me. Apologies. but. Um, uh, thank you very much, Governor and Diane, for coming. It, means, it does mean so much to all of us in New Jersey Transit. Uh, and certainly uh, for my brother in labor, uh, Jerome, great having him up here. You know, he makes sure for everyone that uh, we don't just talk the talk, that we walk the walk. And when we don't, he, he's right on my case, which is uh, exactly what he should do. So a uh, great relationship there. Um, and uh, Chris, uh, thanks very much. Uh, you know, we have the Army-Navy game coming up, so we, you know, we, we, we can argue about that one uh, later, but, uh, you know, thank you for your service and a uh, great, great uh, introduction. Thank you. Um, the uh, first, you know, again, for the whole class of 2001, uh, as, uh, you know, Chris mentioned, and uh, certainly the Governor Diane, on the onset of the pandemic, uh, just when we were coming out, we got PTC done. And, you know, we we're just in going into the pa pandemic as we're coming, you know, like what else could they throw at us? I was waiting for the plague of locusts. Um, and yet we came through in your class, as Diane said, really did a tremendous job. Certainly uh, kudos to your instructors that, uh, you know, be able to put the program together. Uh, obviously, we had a look at how do we keep this going. And uh, we couldn't risk going, uh, going back to the, having an engineer shortage and all, all the pain that we went through in, in 2018 and 2019. So, uh, you know, we put the, the, the training together, we put a lot of the pro program elements online, and uh, as Diane said, you really are the class that is, uh, has been through the most and to be qualified, and the FRA was very happy with what the, the program we put together. You should indeed be extremely proud of yourself. Um, so uh, I would also uh, like to say that um, now, as the governor touched on, we have a full roster of, of locomotive engineers, as I said, the, uh, the, you know, we've had 15 training classes between 2018 and 2021, uh, five in 2018, three in 2019 and 2020, and four this year. And uh, we have hit that magic number of over 400. We have 404 active locomotive engineers. And, uh, you know, I can't tell how much it is aside from the regular, uh, you know, the regular runs that we do. This allows us to really be able to out outshine any other transit system in the country. So we have events whether it be uh, things like uh, the games to MetLife Stadium or concerts, uh, the Giants and Jets home games, the Far Hill steeplechase uh, last week, uh, the upcoming Army-Navy game, all these kind of things. We can go there full, fully confident that we can really give maximum service, first class service, and then the next day be running a full complement, regular, uh, regular service if it's a Sunday event. That Monday, none of the regular commuters have to be impacted. That really gives us, uh, it takes a lot of pressure and it really, uh, you know, our regular customers really appreciate that well. Um, I think when uh, we look at, um, you know, 
as the governor touched on, the, the equipment that you're going to be running. I mean, I love the Jeeps, uh, you know, love the, love the arrows. Uh, there's a lot of nostalgia, but when you look at mean distance between failures, you know, we, have, we look at the investment that the governor and Diane have encouraged us to make, both with the dual modes and uh, with the multi-levels, uh, you know, uh, self-propelled multi-levels. So you will be having, uh, in two years, as we get more of the uh, MUs come in, that you're really going to see, you're going to have the best equipment to be, to be operating. And that's a fantastic, uh, you know, uh, uh, event for us, but it also it's really important for our customers. You don't have that, the, the breakdowns that we have to uh, deal with on the mechanical side. Um, and I, I, the governor touched on it, but in March 2018, we did not have a five-year capital plan. We had no strategic plan. Uh, and in 2017, the agency just had $60 million of hard money construction out on the street. Today, despite all the ch challenges, we worked right through COVID, kept construction projects going. We have more than $4 billion in construction work. And as, as the governor uh, out on the out right now, as the touch, uh, governor touched on, I'm sure you see it out in out in the field and your field training. You know the Raritan River Bridge is well under construction. The long slip, the enhancements and the uh, upgrades that we're doing in Hoboken, uh, County Yard Delco Lead Storage Facility. That's going to be uh, critical, just south of uh, New Brunswick. And then the construction of the new Elizabeth and Perth uh, uh, Amboy stations are just you know a few examples of what what that means uh, that you that you'll be seeing as that continues. Uh, and we fill out the rest of the uh, rest of the uh, 17 billion dollar capital plan. And uh, I would have to just add an extra note on portal. It, as far as things that we, um, you know, where we were, you know, four, three and a half years, four, nearly four years ago, there was nobody when you were talking about doing portal bridge. We we couldn't even make regular service, much less talk about taking on the biggest infrastructure projects in the country. And the governor, even back in 2018, said, you know, Kevin, get it done put up the additional local match, $300 million in additional, because there was a gap. Governor put up the money, and now we have the uh, last board meeting, the last, uh, the last uh, week, we uh, awarded the one, $1. billion project uh, that is being run by New Jersey Transit, together with our partners at Amtrak. So it's a, we've come a long way, and uh, you will be seeing you know, very shortly construction on that side as well. Um, and, I, and beyond that, we will be, uh, soon be working uh, very collaboratively with Amtrak and our partners, Gateway Development Commission, to be starting the tunnel. And that's, uh, we just have got the approval on uh, the EIS, so we're now going through the uh, process for uh, the grant process with the FTA, and there'll be more news to be coming on that shortly. But that is the, the ultimate goal, and that will be the biggest, uh, the Gateway program is the biggest project in the country in decades uh, uh, by far. Um, so I, I'd say this in ending that, that uh, as Diane said, you should be extremely proud, um, and uh, I would say also uh, of yourself, but also be proud to be joining New Jersey Transit. As the governor touched on, uh, you know, Forbes, when they, they have the America's Best Employees by State uh, 2021 list, of the 1,300 employers in the country, only 90 in the country, uh, uh, you know, came from uh, New Jersey. And of those, New Jersey uh, Transit ranked 24th out of 90 as one of the best employers. So for your families, as Diane touched on, this is a great company to be coming to, and it's a great time to be here. So uh, with that, um, I think uh, really, again, congratulations. And I'd ask uh, Jerome to come up and say a few words. Thank you, Kevin. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Governor Murphy committed commitment to rebuilding New Jersey Transit has been highly visible in all parts of the organization, including in, including hiring and training 11 classes of engineers. I congratulate these newly trained engineers on their accomplishment. That accomplishment couldn't be made without good leadership from your training department. Starting with Kyle Russo, Kevin Folkestein, Glenn Egan. Without them, with a good plan, you wouldn't be here. I congratulate you. We're family. We'll move forward together. It's a great place to be. In my three years here in this position as general chairman, I have the pleasure to come in during Governor Murphy's administration. Working with the governor, my sister Diane, brother Kevin Corbett, it's been an honor to watch and respect the direction they are trying to move New Jersey Transit in. New Jersey Transit has reached an all-time low prior to the administration and the change of leadership and they are digging New Jersey Transit out of the hole. In closing, the, good of the governor, my man, Governor Murphy, has walked the walk as he has talked the talk. His support of all labors is unprecedented, 
And like I've stated in the beginning, it's an honor and always be an honor to continue to work with him, New Jersey Transit's leadership. Like I said, my sister Diane, Kevin, Jimmy Sicaglia, Donnie Brochard, even Alex Romanoff back there. And I want to say one more thing. Governor, thank you for the tentative agreement. Um, in these tough times today, during COVID, we got a great tentative agreement. And it wouldn't happen without these three people up here, ultimately the governor. He didn't see what the future holds. He doesn't know what COVID is going to bring us, but he supported us because he respects us as frontline workers and essential workers. Now we must support him. Thank you. Thank you, Jerome. Thank you, Kevin. Um, Chris, I hope you were paying attention when Kevin mentioned the Army-Navy game. You're on the Army side of the sidelines. Kevin's on the Navy side. You guys may want to take this outside. <laughs> thank you, Diane. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Jerome. With that, Kevin, come on up and let's do the roll call. All right. Thank you, Governor. Um, so uh, we will not be uh, coming up for the certificates right now. I think uh, Anthony uh, said we'll just be uh, call your name and we'll take a photo afterwards. But uh, when I call your name, please stand and give us a wave so everyone uh, watching live stream can see you and then have a seat. And then uh, after I call the last student name, I'll ask the governor to come up to the podium for some closing remarks. And as soon as the governor concludes his remarks, I'll ask all of you to stand in front of your seats with your certificates in hand for an appropriately distant group photo. And we'll come down in front and they'll take the photo from up here. So uh, let, let's begin uh, with our first honoree, uh, El Elvin Basila. <laughs> and uh, Bieber's Balkar. Uh, Suleiman Brown. <laughs> Maria Mina Capella. <laughs> and uh, Brianna Moses. <laughs> James O'Connor. And uh, Pete, I'm not sure which, which one of the Okos is this. I, you know, there's so many of you. Yeah, Gavin, you've got 22 years to catch up to your dad. I, I saw his brother out in the, the other day out in the yard, so uh, it's a family affair. Uh, and uh, Jeffrey uh, Placencia. And then uh, Joseph uh, Prumachuk. And Leland Smart. Uh, next we have William Sobieski. And Steve Torres. And Daniel Yaniga. And uh, last but uh, not least, uh, Chris, uh, stand up and show your certificate. <laughs> Great. Uh, again, thanks, and I look forward to seeing you all out on the, in the field. And uh, Governor, if you'd like to come back and for some closing remarks. Thank you. Thank you. I, I don't want to keep you any longer. I just will tell you it's a day of great pride. Uh, I know for you, for your instructors, for your families, and I want to tell you absolutely from me, from Diane, from Kevin and Jerome, this is a big day. God bless you all. Congratulations. We're going to come down and take a picture with you. Okay, great. So uh, we'll come right down, and then uh, we got the, the photograph from up here, drone. Uh, and you stand up. <laughs> 